from the headquarters of Telesur English in Quito, Ecuador. I am Estefania Bravo. This is From the South. Welcome, Venezuelan President Nicolás Maduro is commemorating National Dignity Day alongside high-ranking military officials and armed forces personnel. The event is to mark the day is taking place in the state of Aragua. On February 4, 1992, Hugo Chávez began a civic military rebellion that laid the foundations for the Bolivarian Revolution. Aquí continúa el camino. Here the path begins. Here the path continues. And always with Chávez at the head. Always with the dignity of the people. Today, more than ever, vindicated in the fight, we are in for national sovereignty, the absolute independence of our country, and for respect for the values of our Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela. Today we are in a patriotic march, overthrowing a failed coup by the oligarchy. Here we are in a civilian military march, raising flags of freedom and respect for Venezuela. We are the good Venezuela, the true Venezuela. It is we who take flags of dignity and honor to confront those who call for imperialist intervention, to those who sell their souls to the imperialist devil. They believe Venezuela has no one to defend it, who loves it. And here we are, we who love Venezuela, the ones who defend it with our lives if necessary. And our truth was born 27 years ago, in a rebellion against the IMF and neoliberalism, against the traitors to Venezuela, who were in government at that time, in a rebellion against an exploiting oligarchy that led world empires to distribute Venezuelan resources and which today are again threatening and attacking us. The essence of February 4th is the Bolivarian po Popular Rebellion, the profound military rebellion to defend the idea of our homeland. Also, an International Day of Solidarity for Peace and Democracy event is being held in Caracas with numerous international guests. The meeting was attended by Alan Chavez, brother of President Hugo Chavez, who, along with other speakers, recalled the historic date of February 4, 1992. Foreign Minister Arreaza discussed this year's anniversary as a very distinct moment due to confrontation with the U.S., which came about because Venezuela, through the Bolivarian Revolution, dared to undertake a process of transformation. We've lived greater and lesser levels of intensity over these years, and we are at a time of high intensity, where the U.S. government and elite, as we've said, are not behind the coup d'etat against President Maduro. They are leading it. They are giving the orders, and they aren't clandestine orders. They aren't just orders that they give Julio Borges, the traitor, when he goes to the White House to meet with Pence and Bolton is when they tell him what to do, how to do it, and then those orders are transmitted to the people who have attempted to carry out a coup against the president here. They are just dictating the orders. No, they do it openly, in the media as well. They do it over social media. Venezuela has rejected the decision of some European governments to recognize Juan Guaido as president after he proclaimed himself interim leader. On Twitter, Foreign Minister Jorge Arreaza writes, the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela expresses its strongest rejection of the decision of some governments of Europe to officially join the strategy of the U.S. administration to overthrow the government. Once again, they are following the Washington line. And Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov is criticizing the European Union for backing U.S. interference in Venezuela. During a visit to Kyrgyzstan on Monday, he said that the EU's demand for a new election amounts to an ultimatum insisted, uh, instead of mediation. Lavrov added that it's absurd to question the legitimacy of Venezuela's presidential election. Women from the Caribbean have condemned foreign interference in Venezuela. A statement written by human rights activists and university professors from the region called on the Caribbean to be actively promoted as a zone of peace. The statement strongly endorsed the care composition on Venezuela, respect for the rule of law, and the need for a peaceful resolution in Venezuela. 
The Caribbean Community CARICOM says the region has, has a vested interest in maintaining peace and stability on behalf of the Venezuelan people. CARICOM has also criticized the Organization of American States about its unilateral stance in accepting Venezuela's opposition leader as the self-declared interim president. CARICOM Chairman Dr. Timothy Harris says the regional bloc vehemently rejects any military aggression towards Venezuela. States. And so our position, as is the position that all small island states should take, is that we must pursue peace at all costs in Venezuela. Because the opposite of that, war, bloodshed, military intervention, will not redound to the benefit of the people of the region. We could see no benefit at all from war, for military aggression in Venezuela for the region as a whole. If you have an outbreak of military aggression and warfare, you're going to send the wrong signal. And earlier, Spanish Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez confirmed what he had announced before, that his government recognizes Venezuela's self-proclaimed interim president, Juan Guaido. Previously, Sanchez, on behalf of the European Union, had given the elected government of Nicolás Maduro a deadline of eight days to call for a new election. Hours later, the EU decided it would not speak as a body, but that each state would be free to make its own declaration. In a recent interview, Venezuela's President Nicolás Maduro insisted that dialogue is the way to solve the political situation in the country. The door is open to dialogue, understanding and respect of Venezuela's independence. We are open to a thousand formulas for that kind of understanding. We don't accept ultimatums from anyone. It's like if I told the European Union, I give you seven days to recognize the Republic of Catalonia, and if you don't, we're going to take measures. No, international politics can't be based on ultimatums. That was the era of empires and colonies. Earlier we spoke to former mayor of London, Keith Livingstone, who joined us by phone. Well, the simple fact is, all my lifetime, I, mean, I was born at the end of the Second World War, and right the way through my lifetime, I've watched America overthrowing democratically elected governments all over Central and South America. As soon as those governments start to make sure that um, they're not being ripped off by American corporations and uh, Chavez took control of um, uh, Venezuela's oil from the American corporation, use that to improve uh, housing and health and education for the people of Venezuela. Those are the sort of governments that America wants out. It's, it's completely untrue. Don't get most of the Western media are broadly aligned um, with America's imperial interests. I mean, you get virtually no honest coverage of many of these years. I, I remember all the, the stuff we were told about Castro and Cuba and so on. Um, and if you look... Um, and London-based journalist and political analyst Hafsa Kara Mustafa gave us more insight into events surrounding Venezuela. We spoke with her earlier. Of course, it's not an attempt to restore democracy. And actually, there's no democracy to restore. Uh, President Maduro was elected freely, and all international observers and institutions have actually confirmed that. Um, very much as soon as he was elected, the UN actually declared his election valid and declared him the official president of Venezuela. So there's no democracy to restore as such. And of course, the only plan and the only aim of a country like the United States is to wreak havoc and chaos everywhere. I think we've seen already in the past 20 years alone, we've seen the results of U.S. intervention in Afghanistan, in Iraq, and of course in Libya, which was the most prosperous nation in the African continent, which is now a failed state where people are fleeing, where there is slavery, a return of slavery, and of course living conditions that are absolutely diabolical. And all this is a result of Western and U.S. intervention. So of course uh, the U.S. is not interested in democracy. It never has been. The crisis in Venezuela now has really laid bare the criminality of Western governments and the U.S., which is the main sponsor of international criminality on an international level, a country that uh, imposes its will in this way and is prepared to wreak havoc and denigrate the very basic principles of democracy is obviously not a democratic state and is a threat to international stability. 
The Canadian government has denied Telesur press access to cover the so-called Lima Group meeting on Monday in Ottawa that will discuss the situation in Venezuela. In response, Telesur's president, Patricia Villegas, tweeted, Those who speak of freedom demonstrate through every action how much they don't understand its meaning. She says Telesur will not give up its mission to inform. Russian news agency Sputnik was also denied accreditation to cover the event. The summit is in support of the Venezuelan opposition. We'll be back very soon. Stay with us. resisten en cada una de sus luchas. Somos esa ventana que se abre para visibilizarlos entre fronteras. Thursday, only on Telesur. Welcome back. In El Salvador, Nayib Bukele has won the presidency in the first round of voting. According to preliminary results, Bukele, the Great Alliance for National Unity Ghana candidate, received 53.8% of the votes. Since the end of its civil war in 1992, El Salvador has been governed by the right-wing Arena Party and the left-wing Farabundo Martí National Liberation Front, FMLN. Estos momentos. At this time, we can announce with full certainty that we have won the presidency of the Republic. Today, we won the first round and we made history. We received more votes than ARENA and the FMLN put together. And the candidate for the FMLN, Hugo Martinez, has accepted the election results and has assured that his party will continue to fight for policies of inclusion under the new government. We are prepared to continue fighting for those very commitments that we made with thousands and thousands of Salvadorians who we respect and for whom we will continue fighting for. We are also committed to defend our social achievements. We are committed to defending the price of the milk, the school supplies, agricultural packages, pensions, the increase to the minimum salary, because we are convinced that it's a matter of justice. And since Bukele received over 50% of the votes, there won't be a second round to the election. Carlos Calleja from the far-right Arena party came in second with nearly 32% of the vote. Hugo Martinez from the ruling FMLN took just over 14% and Josué Alvarado from Vamos had less than 1%. And the Supreme Electoral Court in El Salvador may file a sanction against Bukele. This is because Bukele held a news conference on the election day in which he called for citizens to vote. All presidential candidates are banned from campaigning after the electoral campaign closes. Bukele could face an administrative sanction for this. And our special correspondent in El Salvador, Jorge Gestoso, explained how the issue of migrants was at the center of the campaign. Migrants hasn't been uh, very, very curiously, has not been in the, in the discussion, if you want, uh, in the arguments, not even the issue of uh, violence that are two key issues in this country. Definitely what the people of the FMLN, the political party in power, are saying is migrants during their last 10 years, the terms, the two last terms, 
was not motivated by poverty as they're trying to paint with those caravans and most of them are from Guatemalans and not Salvadorians and the people who are fleeing this country are not fleeing because of poverty if not they are eventually because of violence and insecurity. More than 90 different forests have broken, uh, forest fires have broken out overnight across Chile, with the worst of the blazes registered in the southern Araucanía region. According to Chile's interior ministry, at least two people have died, dozens were injured, while many houses have also been destroyed. Some residents even called out President Sebastián Piñera, who they say is consumed by the situation in Venezuela and is not paying attention to his own country. At least 16 migrants have died and another five remain missing in Colombia after their boat sank off the Pacific coast. Only eight people from the vessel carrying mostly Congolese migrants have been found alive, which was reportedly heading towards the United States. Authorities from the Chaco department continue searching for the five missing people, but their chances of survival are slim as their boat sank on January 28th. This weekend in Paraguay, protesters marked the 30th anniversary of the end of Alfredo Stroessner dictatorship. Social movements rallied in capital Asuncion to protest the legacy of the dictatorship. President Mario Abdo Benitez, whose father was Stroessner's personal secretary, has made no reference to the anniversary. There is persecution. Persecution continues as in the time of Stroessner, although it is not so much, but there is always repression and brutal exploitation of workers. At least 28 Haitians have died at sea in the Bahamas after their boat sank. And another group of 17 Haitian migrants were rescued on Sunday. Since the beginning of this year, almost 300 Haitian migrants have been intercepted at sea in four rescue operations by Bahamian authorities. All of them were repatriated to their home country. We'll be back very soon. Stay with us. From here to beyond the south, from here to the Caribbean or further north, where can I see news connecting the whole south? From Washington, from Mexico, from Caracas, from Quito, from Havana. You can always see the news from a new vision, connecting the global south. Only on Welcome back. The presidential campaign has kicked off in Senegal. President Macky Sall hopes to be re-elected in the first round, but he will have to face four other candidates. Sall says infrastructure development is his greatest achievement. The presidential election is scheduled for February 24th. Before Isa was candidate, he did something for Senegal. He built the Sahel University, so he invested in Senegal. That's why Isa is the best candidate. He's a candidate of values. We want to change the country with our leader, Usmane Sonko. We have faith in him. We believe in him. That's why this campaign is our campaign. It's the campaign of the youth. And all the youth is ready to oust this government from Senegal. Health officials in Nigeria are stepping up their efforts to contain a Lhasa fever outbreak.
The viral disease causes bleeding and it has claimed the lives of 42 people since January. Lassa fever has become an annual occurrence in the country, but the country's health ministry says it's making significant progress in containing the disease by focusing on awareness programs. We've galvanized efforts in responding to any outbreak of Lassa fever. We have a very strong team here of specialists in infectious disease who have managed Lassa over the years. And two weeks to go before Nigeria heads to the polls, citizens are divided over President Muhammadu Buhari's performance during his first term. Buhari won his first term in 2015 on his promise to defeat Boko Haram militants and turn around the ailing economy. His supporters claim he has made significant progress on his promises, but his opponents say Nigeria is worse than it was four years ago. I will vote for Buhari because he has done a lot to improve security. We didn't even go to school before. I'm a student and I couldn't leave my house to go to school for fear of bombings. But now it has ended. Now we go out as we please. People are now suffering. You can see that the economy has gone downhill. There's so much inflation and life was easier before Buhari came in. Now things are really tight. We need to have change in leadership. Farmers in Uganda's Buganda Kingdom are realizing the benefits of growing organic crops. The small-scale cassava farmers produce organic varieties without using heavy chemicals. And it's in high demand because of its health benefits. The money will be generated more when someone knows that as he's eating that cassava, it is good for his or her health. That it was produced in a way that there were no chemicals injected into it. And that is a big market incentive that this is trying to show that production is not the end. You need to add value, you need to connect, you need to process, you need to transport, and you need to finally get to the market. At least nine people are dead after a car bomb exploded at a shopping mall in Somalia's capital. The blast occurred Monday in a busy area of Mag Mo Mogadishu. Four cars were burned and a restaurant was destroyed. Security officials say the militant group Al-Shabaab was likely behind the attack. And in Gaza, orphan children have rallied to demand the end of a 12-year blockade of the Strip. They release balloons with banners and messages dedicated to their parents, many of whom were killed by Israeli forces. They are urging the international communities to support a solution to the conflict. Today, after 12 years of the unjust siege on the Gaza Strip, the charity institutions have become unable to provide aid to this important group of children. An orphan child cannot afford his expenses, and he cannot find anybody to help him complete his studies. This is our message to the ones who besiege us. The Zionist occupation is completely responsible for the siege of the Gaza Strip. Pope Francis has arrived in the United Arab Emirates for a historic visit. This is the first time a pope has visited the Arabian Peninsula. He was received by the Crown Prince and the Grand Imam of Sunni people. On his three-day trip, the pope will meet leading Muslims clerics and hold an open-air mass for almost 150,000 Catholics. Turkey's foreign affairs minister has accused Western governments of protecting the killers of Saudi journalist Jamal Khashoggi in exchange for arms deals with Saudi Arabia. Mevlut Cavusoglu says it had not been for pressure from the Turkish government. The Saudi government would never have admitted the journalists had been killed inside its consulate. Rihad indicted 11 people for Khashoggi's murder after denying it for several weeks. And the World Health Organization says the vaccine for human papillom virus is safe despite rumors otherwise. The WHO says the unfounded rumors are causing people to refuse the HPV vaccine and they say that's preventing the elimination of cervical cancer which kills more than 300,000 women every year. A key message that all women and girls absolutely need to hear. 
We have a vaccine that is very efficient and safe. It is the vaccine against the human papilloma virus. So all girls 9 to 14 years old should be vaccinated. And the benefit of this vaccine is in adulthood because they will not have cervical cancer. The United States is sending an additional 3,750 troops to the Mexican border. It brings the total number of soldiers at the border to about 4,300. The Department of Defense says the new troops will be stationed there for three months while they build a razor, wire fences, and support border agents with surveillance work. Critics have called it a political stunt. It comes as President Donald Trump continues to fight Congress for funding to build a border wall. <laughs> And a very special character has launched Bolivia's carnival. Pepino the Cucumber has come back to life for the festivities. The clown-like figure represents the spirit of carnival in the performance. He struggles to escape his casket's confines, while dozens of dancers follow him. The ritual represents Pepino's resurrection, which marks the beginning of carnival season, declared cultural heritage of La Paz in 2015. to the end of this news brief these and other stories as always find them on our website at telesurenglish.net and for our viewers in Africa remember you can find us on StarSat channel 461 in South Africa and channel 539 in Nigeria also join us on social media on Facebook on Twitter and on Instagram for Telesur English I am Estefania Bravo thank you for watching